Good day everyone and welcome back to DX Explorer for another video. It's the first video for 2024. Unfortunately, I'm uh, really, really busy with work and I don't have much time to have fun with radio projects, but I, I just couldn't take it anymore. And uh, it's snowing outside, so I decided to take a break and um, start working on a nice uh, a radio project. This one, it's uh, a return to my childhood, thanks to my friend Hendrik in Germany who sent me this nice faceplate for a um, Heathkit CR1 crystal radio set. Um, obviously it's just a faceplate, so we're going to build a receiver in a little bit. Um, I'm going to call this one the friendship receiver, just because most of the components that I have are actually components that I received from friends from all around the place. And I think it's fantastic. So this one is going to be a nice memory that I'm going to keep here on the shelf for the future. Um, the only thing that I don't have right now it's a nice wooden box. I want to build a, a custom wooden box for this one, but I want oak three uh, wood and uh, I need it to be five millimeters uh, thick and I could not find that one so far. So I'm going to uh, postpone this one until I have the materials that I need because um, yeah, if I build something uh, that will last a long time, I want it to be <laughs> so beautiful as well. So anyway, um, really simple project somehow i'm returning into the past into vintage projects uh, really really simple projects just for a while um, i wanted to post this one for the christmas holidays but unfortunately i did not have the time to to work on this and also i was missing some components so now i finally have everything so we're going to start working on this and of course um, because it's called the friendship receiver i cannot forget the people that are behind my videos and i have to say thank you to them it's my friends at pcb way if you want to build beautiful homebrew projects choose pcb way with excellent pcb prototyping services all you have to do is to open your account on pcb way use the software of your choice to design your pcb board upload the gerber files and place your order Soon you will receive your professional and great quality PCB boards for your projects. PCB Way also offers PCB assembly services, SMD stencils, CNC, 3D printing, and even more. PCB Way is the way. A lot of parts um, are from friends. So the germanium diet is from my friend Andre, Yankee Oscar Six, Tango Julia Julia. He gave me a couple of them so I can play around with simple projects like this. The um, high impedance uh, crystal. Um, headphone and um, I have these uh, two knobs which I wish I, they were bigger but it's the only thing that I have right now so I'm going to use this one uh, these are from me also these two the connectors are from a, an old Radio Shack uh, components um, kit that I received from a friend while I was still living in the US and uh, I still have a couple of components from that kit so I'm still using them uh, these two switches are from me, uh, just so I can switch in and out uh, capacitance. The audio jack connector is also from me. Unfortunately, it's a stereo one, but I'm going to wire it as mono. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have vintage components except the two variable capacitors. Everything else is brand new. <laughs> um, this, for these two, I have to say a big thank you to my friend Adi Pascu. Uh, he's a, an owner of a really small business, um, a small shop in Brasov. He's selling uh, components um, and uh, he gifted me one variable capacitor um, right before the holidays and I was planning to use it for my first uh, vacuum tube uh, receiver. But unfortunately, um, I decided to build this one first just because I still uh, searched for a couple of parts for that one. and. Um, I need it in order to build this receiver, this particular um, Heathkit uh, CR1 crystal set, I needed two identical variable capacitors. <laughs> and he started searching for this one at, I believe it was like 1 a.m. and he wrote me at 4, at 4 a.m. you can go at the store and pick up the uh, capacitor. And uh, yeah, big thank you. I very, very much appreciate this. And um, they were both gifts from him for me. so. Um, I have to say a big thank you. Now the only problem for me right now is how I'm going to fix the capacitors on the faceplate because right now I still um, I don't have an idea of how I'm going to do that. 
but I guess I'll figure out in a little bit. <laughs> anyway, I'll do this off camera just so I'm not going to waste your time. And uh, probably I'm going to put together everything else and uh, we'll just uh, come back later on to do the wiring and everything else that is needed. So I managed to uh, install all the um, hardware on the faceplate and of course also the variable capacitors. With these ones I had a, a little bit of a headache uh, trying to figure out how to install them. They do come with holes um, uh, specially designed for the capacitor to be installed on, um, on a faceplate but the problem was that the holes would uh, be outside of the knob and they would look quite ugly so I didn't want that. So what I end up doing is um, I drilled three holes over here and I'll show you another variable capacitor as an example so I don't have to take those off. Um, it's this thing over here that's holding the axis for the gears. Um, these capacitors they have three uh, different uh, screws Initially I thought about removing all three of them, but then I realized that if I remove all three of them, the axis will come off and I didn't want that. So I left one screw and I ended up only using uh, two of the holes that I drilled. So that's how I fixed the issue, just in case you're thinking about building the same thing and you have similar capacitors. Now the only other issue that I have is that the axes are way too long, so I'm going to end up uh, cutting them a little bit shorter just so the, um, the knob will be closer to the faceplate. Okay, so the receiver is almost finished. Um, on the screen you can see the original schematic provided by Heathkit. The only difference between the original version and my version is that I'm not using a rotary switch to, to switch in additional capacitance. I'm actually using these two separate switches that are uh, on the front panel. So. If I'm going over here, and of course I did not have silver mica capacitors, I just used some regular uh, ceramic capacitors, vintage ones. Um, but uh, probably later on if I see that it's not very stable in frequency, I will replace this with silver mica. For now it's going to be okay. Now um, I'm only using half of each variable capacitor, and uh, this half has 330 picofarads in capacity same over here um, just because I'm trying to stick as close as possible to the original and um, if I would put both of them together then I would get around 660 uh, picofarads from each so I'm going to stick to 330 um, and each additional capacitor um, has 320 picofarads um, so together they would be like uh, 640 additional uh, 640 picofarads additional capacitance that I can switch in um, separately together with the, the variable capacitor. This is just for the antenna side. Um, here I have the germanium diode and all I have to build right now is the coil. Now this is where it gets complicated. So in order to build the cardboard tube that uh, is required for the coil of this receiver. I used some simple printer paper and I rolled it and I used some super glue to glue the whole thing together and uh, I made it in such a way that the uh, ferrite slugs will fit perfectly inside and the uh, tube looks like this right now. It has one centimeter in diameter, 10 millimeters and the interior has five millimeters. Now the original slugs, um, from what I've read so far, they were six millimeters in diameter. Unfortunately, the ones that I have are only five, and uh, they were 15 millimeters long. The only ones that I could find are 20 millimeters long, but that uh, will not influence much because what I will do, I will fix them inside and I will change the number of turns accordingly until I have the required inductance that I need. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, since I'm trying to build a replica, I'm trying to build it as original as possible. So the distance between these two slugs has to be about 10 millimeters. Um, I'll put them inside like this and I'll glue them uh, so they will stay fixed and they will not move. And uh, I'm, I will make a mark on top so I know exactly where they are and then I know how to um, 
put the coil right on top of the of these slugs. Now uh, the difference between the original coil, which apparently I couldn't find any information about, ex except other people's replicas, um, I will have to calculate the resonant circuit that I want uh, com using the capacitance that I have. So in my case, it's 330 picofarads is the maximum, and the 18 picofarads um, is the minimum value of the variable capacitor that I have. So I would say that probably with the value that I have and about 280 microhenries for the um, tuning coil, I would get somewhere between approximately from 500 kilohertz up to probably somewhere around two, uh, 2 megahertz. We'll see. I will have to do some calculations. But that's out of my head right away. And then I will have to do another calculations for the antenna coil, which is going to be a little bigger in uh, inductance as far as I've seen from what I read in other blog articles. When I'm going to read the blog, uh, write the blog article for this receiver, I'll put a link to all the, um, the other links, uh, other blog articles written by other people where I could find some information and it helped me figure out uh, the way this works. So I don't know how exact I can be with this, but uh, the coil seems to be the most important part in building this receiver. That's why I left it at the end because it's very detailed information. So what I'm going to do now, I'm, first I'm going to fix these uh, slugs inside. Um, then I will build the coils and uh, I'll show you at the end how they look like and uh, the calculations that I end up doing and the number of turns that I used. Even though I don't think I can be so perfect uh, because I'm going to use this kind of uh, wire from an old antenna. The original wire, it was about, uh, I believe it was like 12 very thin wires, like this one, but they were twisted together and usually that equals to a 0 0.4 uh, millimeters um, regular copper wire. But this is the uh, Litz wire used for radio frequency usually for the coils. This is the thin one, the thin version, um, so I'm going to use this one and we'll see how many turns I need, but because I cannot do them perfectly, one on top of each other, it will have to be a lot of guesswork and a lot of measurements in order to get the inductance that I need. And as long as I have the inductance that I need, it doesn't matter how the coil looks like, because I'll be able to tune between the frequencies that I want. The problem will be the antenna coil, because um, oh, and this one as well, it has to be, um, it has to have a, um, a, how do you call this, a tap. And usually when building these coils for simple receivers like this, the tap should be about 20% from the number of turns, the total number of turns. Well, I don't know which the number of uh, turns is the total until I build it and I measure the inductance and I know. And then I'll probably have to remove all the turns, calculate that 20%, and then um, uh, do the tap this way and remake the coil again uh, with the total number of turns, remeasure the inductance and make sure that I have the right inductance and then I can carry on and do the antenna coil. So it's going to be a bit tricky but I hope I can succeed, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, let me finish this and then I'll get back to you with the finished coil and a couple of more details. But I hope this will help you to have a successful receiver project as close as possible to the original um, Heathkit CR1 crystal radio. Okay, so after a lot of time spent trying to build this coil, I uh, glued the slugs inside at the right, um, right distance. I have another paper tube inside which is one centimeter long, it's 10 millimeters, between these two coils so it will keep the slugs on uh, equal distance. And uh, I have like this, this is the antenna coil and I don't know the number of turns but I basically put as many turns until I reached the, I put many turns basically and I ended up taking a, a lot of turns out. <laughs> but I ended up with a, an inductance of 340 microhenries and this is the tuning coil, uh, this is the tap. The tuning coil has a total uh, inductance of 280 microhenries 
and uh, for the top basically I started the coil over here I put 30 turns I took the top out and then I continue and I um, won the coil until I reached 280 micro -hindries. and the reason I picked that specific inductance is because of the variable capacitor that I have so uh, I can tune between somewhere about uh, 543 kilohertz up to 2.2 megahertz so I should be able to cover a lot <laughs> we'll see how that works and if it works uh, about the antenna coil um, from the article that I read uh, the coil that was described in that article was somewhere around 335 microhenries I just used the round number so I put 340 I don't know if I did good or bad we'll see about that all right, so after three days of work, <laughs> I finally finished uh, this receiver. Um, the only thing that I do not have right now, it's a special dedicated antenna for this kind of receiver. So basically, I'm just going to connect it straight to my end fed half wave, which is only resonating in theory from 80 meters up to uh, 10 meters, but probably it would still pick up some signals um, and we get to hear something. So what I did, I soldered on the back a BNC connector and yeah, I'm just going to connect the receiver straight into this one. Now probably it's going to be a little bit noisy just because I have my LED lights turned on. Uh, it's quite late in the evening so <laughs> um, it would be hard to film this without uh, the lights. I placed the coil in its place. I found some interesting <laughs> um, way of um, keeping the coil steady and uh, it seems to be pretty strong here so it doesn't move which is good i connected all the wires and meanwhile i will also replace the diode i did some tests earlier and i was um, a little bit more happy with the way this one performs so anyway let's connect it and uh, i'm going to connect this one to my wireless system so i won't talk anything but uh, you'll get to hear the receiver um, in action All right, that's it for today with this receiver. Uh, probably in the near future, I'm going to post a couple of more videos related to crystal radios. I have a couple of other things in my mind, but uh, we'll see that in, into, into the next uh, videos. Um, I have to say thank you one more time to my, hand, my friend Hendrik, uh, who uh, made the faceplate for me. <laughs> I'm really excited. I really like the, this receiver. And um, it's a funny story. I, I recorded the whole thing, but I didn't post it in the video. But the first station that I actually received on this one was a German station. And I thought it's funny since Hendrik is from Germany. <laughs> But it was a lot of copyrighted music, so I decided not to put in the video so I don't get in trouble with YouTube. Anyway, I hope you liked it and I hope you will like some other videos um, related to crystal radios and other simple receivers that I'm going to uh, post uh, now and then. But uh, for me, this one was like a fresh breath of air returning into my childhood with simple uh, receivers like this one. So anyway. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Until then, 73, I have a magical rest of the week.
fitosanitare, alte țări europene au acces la peste 400 și obțin producții mult mai mari. Pe bună dreptate, ei sunt nemulțumiți că produse alimentare venite.